Yes. <laughs> Very sorry. Okay. Is that okay? Thank yes, you. Thank sorry. You. Thank you for no. because usually it's no, no, very confusing for, for um, thank you thank you thank yeah. thank you very much for the correction thank you very much for the correction okay all right so uh, this is uh, this is one thing and now we have seen that we have seen the expression for t alpha beta we constructed last time and what was the value of this t alpha beta was g alpha beta minus one half minus one half h alpha beta into h dot g h dot g could be h h gamma delta g or alpha beta, the dummy indices. Okay. So, and we have also proved that T alpha beta is zero, right? We proved last time that T alpha beta for the body of is zero, and this tells us that G alpha beta is proportional to H alpha beta or H alpha beta is proportional to G alpha beta. So there is a proportionality constant. And if you fix up uh, beta to be equal to 1, the proportionality constant to be equal to 1, that is called as the conformal. So in the conformal gauge, this uh, proportionality factor beta uh, of tau and sigma is taken as 1. So with beta as 1, this would then be equal to g alpha beta. Okay. Now, <coughs> So, this is minus t by 2 t by sigma square root of minus x, x alpha beta and g alpha beta is your You, you might recollect we have we, we, we have defined ds square to be equal to uh, what was this in the ds square was minus eta mu nu times dx nu dx nu and then we have written is minus eta mu nu dx nu d uh, sigma alpha and then we have defined this guy as g alpha beta and therefore, what we had got was minus g alpha beta d sigma alpha d sigma beta. And you might recollect that for this particular region, we, we interpreted that this ds square measures distances in the target space in the space time manifold, whereas it measures distances also on the word sheet. Okay. So this measure this measures the distances on the word sheet, and this measures the distances. And this definition of G alpha beta makes use of eta mu nu. That was the point. For that particular region, we called it the induced matrix or the pullback matrix. Okay. 
Fine. So <coughs> now here uh, okay. Uh, could I could I first make use of this uh, uh, and then go to the symmetries? Would that be possible? That I I I want to make use of those. Uh, I will just now after this because it's written just to save time. Uh, I would like to to say that this h alpha beta. I would like to take as minus zero zero one. This remember that this is a metric on the bird sheet. Bird sheet is two dimensional. Okay, bird sheet my bird sheet is two dimensional. Okay, so. Uh, why one does it? It's because the action has three local gauge symmetries. I will just now list them out once again. So, if we make use of those, then we can fix up uh, if you and this is symmetric. It's a two tensor and it's a symmetric tensor on the bird sheet. So, if you fix up this edge zero, then this also gets fixed at zero. If you fix up this edge one, then this also gets fixed at one. But the opposite signs, they are because of the Lorentz in nature of the metric. They are because of the Lorentz in nature of the metric. So, one thing we want to make use of is so that H alpha beta is taken as this. And here, In that case, here determinant of H is uh, no H is determinant of H alpha beta. This is determinant of minus one zero zero one. This is minus one, and therefore square root of minus one is equal to plus one. So this. Object is plus one into H alpha beta. I take it your it's a it's a it's a, it's a metric of the bird sheet. So I can I can I can use it to reach either alpha or reach beta. One of the two. Okay. So uh, let me keep del alpha here, let me keep x mu here, then let me reach. Okay. In any case, they are also repeated or dummy indices. So and this is x nu theta mu nu. Okay. And then I can also make use of this. So this is minus e by 2. And then this is d2 sigma into 1 into del alpha x mu del alpha. I can write like this. Okay. <coughs> All right. So then this is called as the this is called as the conformally gauge fixed for your whole x. Okay. This is the conformally gauge fixed for your code x and and if I would go further to simplify it, then in my notation this will be minus k by 2 d2 sigma and this would be del alpha h del tau. Oh let me let me do it separately. So this is already written here, so I can I can I can remove this. Okay. This is already written here. So uh, for this part, okay. <coughs> or or let me let, let me call it the other part. This is minus e by two d two sigma. Now. Then tau x mu, then tau x mu plus del sigma x mu 
del sigma x1 and now this will be minus I want to bring it down so I pick up a minus sign I bring it down but I pick up a plus sign okay not a, because the metric is minus 1 0 0 1 that is my h alpha beta so no uh, yes so here here your delta of x mu would be minus delta of x mu and del sigma x mu would be plus del sigma x mu. If you like you could call them by the by by the dots if you like this is and mu is there, so mu is there. Okay. All right. So uh, this would then be uh, now. I want to show it to you in a very simplified manner. So this would be minus x dot mu x dot mu plus x prime mu x prime mu if you like you can write it as 